in the secret place of the most high. Well, that's where you'll find me under his wings. It's where I hide. Said it's in the secret place of the most he's the most high and that's where you'll find me under his wings is where i hide said under his wings is where i hide Said it's in the secret place of the Most High. See, that's where you'll find me under his wings. It's where I hide. Said it's in the secret place of the most he's the most high and that's where you'll find me say that's where you'll find me under his wings is where i hide say under his wings it's where I hide. Hallelujah. In the secret place of the highest, the most high yah. That's where you're gonna find Robert under his wings, giving him praise. Saying praise the most high today for another grand opportunity to lift him up, to give him praises, to honor his name. Hallelujah. I say thank the Most High for today, family. Thank you for tuning in with us. Pardon me. Thank you for tuning in with us today, being a part of our secret place idea. Hallelujah. What started out as a um, speech therapy exercise after I had the stroke in 2016 my speech therapist told me to um, I had to learn how to talk again and how to walk again after I had toes amputated and um, I had the slurred mouth the slurred tongue and the crooked mouth slobbered it every time I opened my mouth couldn't control my slobber but the most I turned that into a ministry from me going home, doing a journal every day and going back to my speech therapist and we would work on the words I had problems with. And she was a great therapist, great therapist. And she, um, most I leading, helped us learn how to talk again properly, learn how to um, pronunciate or pronounce our words correctly. I had problems with S's and T's. That's why you may hear me overstate them at times. But praise the most high. It, it work, it's working on up. Hallelujah. And at times, well, at times we used to have issues with the eye, with reading certain things from the eye to the to reading it, to pronouncing it. But the Most High has been working with, working on that with us. We say praise the Most High, we thank Him. Because family, as I was in prayer today, I was like, Father, well, I think I said, Pop, I'll be nobody without you. And as soon as that came off my lips, he was like, but you got me. I said, well, but I'm everything because of you. And the next thing I did was I said, I, I do all things through you 
because you are my strength. You're my redeemer. You're my Yah, my strength, and my redeemer. Mm. Pardon me, family. It's that time of the year here in the Carolinas. them eyeballs off. Thank you, Father. But yes, we all know that for a fact, family, that without him, we, we will be nothing. But the truth is, we have him. And as we keep him first in the highest position in our lives, then he's able to do what he needs to do in and through us. And that's so important, family. That's so important because what we're trying to do is bring his kingdom into this earth, this earthly vessel, this earthen vessel as the text says. And from this earthen vessel, out here into the, into the earth to where we affect and infect other brothers and sisters. First, our, um, our tribe, as the text says, about them dry bones being awakened first to our parts. Each part touching, going to their certain part and then the skin came on them, onto the, the, the body, the sinews, the muscles, the bones came together. And then we all stood up as a great army. But first it starts hand to hand, mouth to mouth calling each other to repentance the reason why we're, we were in that state of death the reason why we was dead and dried bones because we turned away from the most high's command we um took him out of his position first in our lives so that's why the text calls for us to repent for our transgressions and the transgressions of our forefathers our ancestors when they turned their backs on him and, and he caused us to do that, family. He showed that to me because of the generational curses that are um, followed through their disobedience. And be like, well, why I got to repent for them? Because the same thing that they they did is in you to do. Them same, um, what you call them, um, demons. It's, it's thicker than that, though. It's, it's, it's much higher than that the, um, in high places them devils in high places the text says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities that's the name we was trying to label them we gotta call them by name they're principalities and um, we're fighting against them every day family See, a lot of times we whoop him in our lives and with, with the most High's help and his leading and his strength because we know it's not by our might nor our power but by the power of the most high and his strength that we do anything but with his power his order his direction we'll whoop the demons in our lives we'll whoop them addictions we'll whoop them um them cares of the world and we graduated on to um to the point where he's calling us to um, affect each, each, each other. Where he's calling us to um, get out here and testify and call our brothers and sisters to repentance, to wake up our brothers and sisters and say, you don't have to live like you're living. You don't have to walk that walk no more. You don't have to talk that talk no more. That's old news. And that's bad business for for the kingdom. See, a lot of us won't dip, change, but we don't. We don't want to um, switch up our um, switch up the play. We want to play the same old way and lose. <laughs> it's just like um, playing ball back in the day. We figured out when I was um, playing shortstop, we was losing. So the coach would say, "Come on, up, come on in, Robert. We need you to throw the ball. We need you to pitch, pitch for a couple of innings." And they figure out I strike out a few. I hit a whole lot more than I struck out. <laughs> I hit a whole lot more than I struck out, but 
it, that was that was the key. They were scared. So they would back up off the, the plate and, and start swinging wildly, missing the ball, trying to beat their own the defensive because they knew. Apparently one time I hit this white, this white kid and it hurt my feelings so much because I hit him in the neck and that joker passed out. I thought I killed him. I said, oh, I'm going to kill this white boy. <laughs> oh, boy, it won't fun in there, fam. I was up there nervous as I don't know what. My hands sweating. <laughs> I remember the day my hands sweating. I had I had a ball in my hand because the ref threw it back to me. And I was just sweating. I couldn't hardly hold the ball. I was nervous. I said, Father, don't let this boy die. But he, he got up, fam, had a big red spot on his <laughs> And after that, I was known as the the um the pitcher that'll knock you out. <laughs> that'll kill you. But that 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 helped and um, was to our advantage. Because they knew. is a park we have idiots like that flying through here like that see this is a kid's area over here and he flying through that through here like that immature and see this is who we call into repentance that lifestyle don't work no more and it's all about selfishness mm -mm -mm. crazy most how we tiptoeing into this idea I feel it and I hear what I'm saying Thank you, Father. Because we want um, we want to be the head honcho in charge. We want to be in charge of everything that goes on in our lives. And, and, and just like I was saying, it causes us to lose every time. Because we're not following the most high's rules. He said, um, and we'll get to it. Uh, family, I do hope everyone is well today and that you're able to get out and enjoy this day like I am getting in some fresh air, some sunshine, and the most high willing, some good exercise. But we do have a grand idea, and we're going to give the, the title, The Head Honcho, as we was just speaking on. The Head Honcho. And how many of us know it's not us? Uh-oh. Robert, you mean I got to follow some rules and listen to somebody else besides myself? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. And don't think it, you're somebody special. This happens to everybody in the whole world. See, just as we used to tell our kids, no matter where you go, you're going to have rules. In this life, you can have rules. Whether it's a curfew, whether it's doing your homework, everybody that's grown had to come to the reality that we, there's rules that you have to follow and that you have to bow down to somebody besides yourself. Just like with living in a country, you have to follow the rules of that country. If not, they're going to lock you up. If not, you're going to be in jail saying, I wish I had listen to mom and daddy. And I wish I had to follow the rules. But this is where we're at today. And a lot of people don't want to follow the most high's rules. See, he made rules for his kingdom. And see, no matter what these lying Christian pastors tell you, or any other religion tell you, you got to follow the most high's rules. Because it's the rules he set up for his kingdom. And you can't get into the kingdom if you don't follow his rules. And of course, we know his rules are the laws, statutes, and commands that he set up. And I heard a teacher say that if you studied and um, really concentrated on the first 10, then by and through them, you, you'll be keeping them all. Because the first one, you're going you're gonna to be automatically um, keeping all the commandments, which is loving the most high with all your heart. Put nobody else before him. Making him the head honcho of your life. And see, then he's going to give you the Ruach Kakadash, which is going to lead you and guide you into all truth. 
and the text says he's gonna go gonna go a step further than that. He's gonna write the laws on your heart and in your mind. So when you have something always flashing before you, when you want to do evil, you see something flash before your eyes, say, no, 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 that's not the rules, follow this. Then it's gonna be a whole lot easier in, in your life. And you will show them make the kingdom. But the most I gave me this idea, family, I think it was like two days ago. No, nope, it won't. Let me stop lying. It was um like the middle of the month, the 15th. And I kept looking over it and was like, well, Pop, what are we going to do with this? And he was like, not yet, not yet. Because I started, let's, let's see if get the exact date. So he just woke me up to this idea. He said, Asa's dad got some explaining to do. <laughs> he said, Asa's dad got some explaining to do. I was like, Asa's dad? Who is Asa? And I knew he was a, a character out of the book, out of the um, text. But I didn't know who, who, who the most I was talking about. His dad had some explaining to do. trying to put my eyes on it because I had some notes behind it. No, Joe Ash's dad got some explaining to do. Joe Ash's dad got some explaining to do. And if I'm not mistaken, Joe Ash was a Asa was Joe Ash's dad. King Joe Ash's dad. But the head honcho is the person with the most authority. Oh boy. The person with the most authority. And most of us know we can't put ourselves in them shoes. Most of us smart individuals know. And I'm not the most I'm not the person with the most authority. First of all, in my life, and um definitely not in, in um the Ruaku kingdom. Because I couldn't dare, I can't even get over uh, addictions to stop smoking cigarettes. I couldn't get over the addiction to stop smoking cigarettes. Let alone weed, popping pills, sniffing dope, cocaine every now and again. One time, real heavy. Marijuana, alcohol, and cold, cool 